I'm Andrea from Lemoore, California, and you're watching Gospel Tangents, your best source for Mormon history, science, and theology. Jesus said, according to Matthew 22, verse 30, that there is no marriage in heaven. How do modern polygamists handle that scripture? In our next conversation with Anne Wild, a polygamy expert, as well as David Patrick, an apostle for Christ Church, they'll talk about how they respond to that scripture and other scriptures that might challenge the idea of marriage in heaven. Check out our conversation. Well, so let me, let me, I'll, I'll once again, and I'm not an evangelical, and, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to give the, their argument, um, just, just for the sake of discussion here. Um, you know, the Apostle Paul said, um, and I'm trying to remember the exact wording here, but it, it is better to, let's see, if they cannot contain, let them marry, for it is better to marry than to burn. Um, so, in, and I can't remember, I, I know I have that me close to memorized there, and I can't remember exactly where that is, but, but it seems like Paul was really down on marriage. And there's also the story of um, um, the, the parable where the Pharisees come to Jesus and they had the Leviret marriages where they're supposed to, if a man dies, the brother's brother. supposed to marry the wife, and then seven brothers die. And who gets this wife in heaven because there were no children? And Jesus says, um, you do not understand, for in heaven they neither marry nor are given in marriage. Now, I know that Mormons and evangelicals and Catholics all, all use that, especially that scripture that I just mentioned, together to support their side um, of, but, but from an evangelical, and that's where I'm trying to, to bring this in, trying to, you know, and if there are any evangelicals out there, you know, be respectful, but, but, but you know, you're welcome to disagree. But it says right there, there's no marriage in heaven. Okay. So, so how do you respond to that? Define heaven. Now, to me, heaven is this three degrees of glory, celestial, terrestrial, telestial. That's after the thousand years of the millennium, which I think the evangelicals believe in the millennium, a thousand years. Mm -hmm. um, okay, after the millennium, there's no marriage or given in marriage because you have the second judgment. You have a first judgment before the millennium, second judgment after. You can marry, from what I understand, during the millennium. There will be marriages. But after the millennium, if they want to define that as heaven, then you do not, there are no marriages because it, it's not part of mortality and marriages are from mortality. Do you agree with that? Yeah. And, and I guess I'll just add a, a maybe a different flair also to this. Um, well, we believe in a restoration of the priesthood, a restoration of the gospel and that there were dark ages when there wasn't priesthood on the earth. And that was Joseph Smith's role, is to bring and restore those things. And so we talked about possibly these plain and precious things not making it into the canon of Scripture. And so, so this, is, uh, this is now why we have a restoration. This is why there's mo more new information <laughs> that's really old information, but it's restored. And... I mean, it's kind of that simple to me. Okay, so let me make sure I understand. So, Anne, so what you were saying is that marriage, because well, I'm not quite sure I understood that. Marriage was for mortality, but if... But heaven is not part, I mean, that's after mortality. And so the time to be baptized and do all these earthly ordinances and be married and all that is during mortality. Then... After that, it's too late. I mean, you go on to a heaven, however you want to define it. But at that point in the whole progression of things, um, you don't get married. So, the, so the scripture is is accurate as far as I see, but it's up to subject to interpretation. So marriage is something that only happens here on earth. And if if you die without getting married, then it's too late. You can't get you can't get married. Is that, is that what you're saying? Well, pretty much. Well, I that's mean, what. That's the way I understand we, the plan of salvation. But we also do temple work. For to to bring those unions into into being. But I think what you're saying is, 
those those unions and that temple work is going to happen throughout the millennial time, the millennium. But from what but I then, know, because temples the end of will that, the land during the millennium, so there's mm -hmm. going to be temple work taking place. Right, but after after that thousand years is wrapped up, then it's that's, it's, that's your chance, that's yeah, your opportunity. I, I should, but that gives you plenty of chance. My gosh, you have six, seven thousand years of this mortality, and plus a thousand years. Let's say six thousand plus a thousand. Um, that gives you plenty of chance if you're going to get married to get married during that time. Okay, so let's jump back in. Um, I, I just want to make sure that I'm, I'm clear on what you were saying. So, marriage occurs in this life. I mean, this this brings up a, actually a little bit of a dilemma then because I want to make sure I understand. So, we're talking about the parable of the seven brothers that marry the woman, and she. Jesus says they neither marry nor are given in marriage in the resurrection. No, in heaven. In heaven. I thought you said. Okay. Okay. Um, but, so, you're, I mean, we do temple work as, as Mormons, we, I mean, and even the Christ church here, mm -hmm. we do temple work and we, we put people together. I know. But that's a mortal thing that they're doing because these people can't. They've well, gone on. That's another really uh, evidence that they're not going to be married in no marriages in heaven, because it has by to be proxy it has to be. It's a mortal thing like baptism, conferring to priesthood. These are mortal ordinances that God has given us to help us know how to get back to Him, okay, to, in His presence. So He's given us these guidelines and these ordinances. Well, after a point, you, if you haven't done them, it's too late. And maybe in some cases, like the temple work, somebody can do it for you, but you can't do it yourself after a point. Okay, so so okay, so okay, marriage has to occur here on earth. Either you do it yourself or, or via proxy. proxy. Okay, and so, so that's how you would interpret that scripture there. And then if people in the, in the resurrection choose not to be married, then what we did on earth is not even binding. Is that, is that correct? Well, resurrection, we're resurrected to a kind of body, a telestial, terrestrial, celestial. So you can't go back and do things that you should have done because that's the reward or the whatever you want to call it, the station that you have earned in mortality. So it's just like once you've graduated from college, you don't go back and re-graduate. I mean, you can take post-collegiate post courses and things, but you reach a point where all the mortality ordinances have to have been done. Okay, so that, that's how you would interpret that. Okay. Uh, do you have anything to add to that, David? No, no that's no. good. Okay. All right. So what about this scripture with Paul then? Because um, I, I always remember, I always think it's funny, for it is better to marry than to burn. Essentially, what Paul is saying, if you can't contain yourselves to not have sexual relations, you know, Paul says you should remain celibate even as I am. But if you can't contain, okay, go ahead and get married, you know, because it's better to marry than to burn. I mean, that doesn't sound like a ringing endorsement of marriage. Well, well Paul was married. Yeah, I was just going to say that too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so, and and that's that's the only... That's the only real scripture that they can hang on to call for celibacy, I guess. Well, he also said women shouldn't talk in church. I mean, yeah. <laughs> you know, you have to take some well, of the some things he says. Still you that. have to consider who's he talking to? Who's who's Paul's audience? He's talking to a bunch of women that um, that he doesn't want talking in church. He might say something like that, you know. Well, and I, I will say this, uh, I, I met with the um, Temple Lot Church in Independence, and I was, I was pretty surprised to hear this, but um, they, they take that scripture from Paul, and they're sort of Mormon, I guess you could say. I mean, they believe in the Book of Mormon. They don't believe in the Doctrine and Covenants. They, they do not believe in polygamy at all, but they do not allow women to speak in church. So, because of what Paul said? Because of what Paul said. Well, you know, if you're going to take everything literally that's in, the, as it's translated correctly, according to what Joseph said, that appears in Scripture, you're going to have an awfully hard time 
making everything mesh that's in the scriptures because there's too many places where it does not agree. Not only from one book to another, but from one chapter to another. Um, and so you have to take a little of that with a grain of salt because there's some things that you can't take literally, maybe more figuratively. Okay. So well, that's why that's why Joseph Smith went into the grove of trees to pray. It was like, it's confusion out there. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why he went through and started making in, inspirational, we believe, changes to the Bible because it was not translated correctly and because there's problems with it. So he tried to correct as many of those passages as he could. Okay. All right, well, I've, I've played evangelical enough. I, don't know. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed our conversation with David Patrick and Ann Wilde. In our next conversation, we'll talk about some extra-biblical passages that tend to make the case that Jesus was indeed married. But this is the Gospel of Philip as found in the Nagamati Scrolls. Okay. So it, it reads this way, but there's there's holes in in the scrolls, and yeah. so literally there's holes in what the words are. As they unfurled them, the, yeah. it was so damaged that it's got holes So there. you, you kind of have to fill in a few blanks of your own, and I'll, I'll say it's a blank, and then you fill in your own blank here, but it says, as for wisdom, who is called the barren? She is the mother of the angels and the companion of the blank, Mary Magdalene. So could it have said the companion of the Savior, companion of the Lord? I don't know. Then it goes on. Um, I loved her more than all the disciples and used to kiss her on, on her... the lips. It says it's blank. On well, it's hole. on the lips. So it's a, <laughs> is it her lips? Is it her hand? Is it her forehead? forehead. What, what is it, right? If you'd like to hear the entire interview uncut, please support Gospel Tangents and become a subscriber. For just $5 a month, go to uh, patreon.com slash gospel tangents and you can hear the entire interview. And you can also get uh, transcripts available at either our Amazon website or if you want to give the money to me and not Amazon, please subscribe on my website at gospeltangents.com and you can click the yellow subscribe button. Of course, we're also on Facebook, Twitter, and all the other places. Uh, make sure you subscribe on iTunes at tinyurl.com slash gospel tangents. And don't forget to click here to subscribe on YouTube here for a transcript. And over here, we've got some more of our great videos. Thanks again for listening.